we at the Khan Academy take feedback very seriously. Uh, we're constantly trying to improve, and we recognize that we are at the early stages. We have a very imperfect product, and, and we can only hopefully improve, and that's why we have, we're have we working with as many teachers as we can. Some are, are, are directly part of our staff. We have teaching consultants. We're working with some researchers. But I, I wanted to make this video because sometimes the feedback itself can be a teaching moment. And the video in question is this video, which is in our physics playlist, which is essentially a video about calculating what the velocity might be for a stationary rock dropped from a height, what the velocity might be right before, right before it hits the ground. And we just recently got some pretty high profile feedback from a blog writer at Wired Magazine, and this is the URL where you might be able to find that, is Rhett Aylin, who's an associate professor of physics at Southeastern Louisiana University. And I, I'm, I'm confident that this was uh, intended as, as constructive feedback, but the reason why it's a, a teaching moment is because it's, it's wrong. And I'll, I'll read a little excerpt from it right over here. If I had to focus on one main problem, it would be Kahn's lack of respect for vectors. In particular, he set a vector quantity equal to the scalar value of 0. And then we come back down. The other big error Kahn makes is say that a velocity going down would be a negative vector. Some other things right over here. Really, Kahn is trying to do a one-dimensional kinematics problem. Really, Kahn is trying to do a one-dimensional kinematics problem. In this case, you don't need to include the vector idea. So the one part of this that I do agree with is this statement right over here, that we were trying to do a one-dimensional kinematics problem. And in this situation, that one dimension is the vertical dimension, the up-down dimension. But in order to kind of understand why the second part is very, 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 very wrong, is to just go back to a definition of what a vector is. So a vector, a vector is something that has a magnitude, magnitude, and and a direction. If you just had a magnitude, you're talking about a scalar. If you're just talking about a magnitude, you're talking about a scalar. So if I were to tell you that a ball is traveling at five meters per second, I'm only telling you how fast it's going. I'm only giving you its speed. That would be a scalar expression, a scalar value I just gave you. But you wouldn't know whether that ball is traveling up or down, even though even if you knew that we're dealing with the one-dimensional situation. In order to know whether it's going up or down, I have to specify a direction. So if I were to say, so if I were to say five meters per second, that's a scalar. If I say five meters per second up or down, that is a vector. It's not using the engineering notation that you would often use once you have multi-dimensional vectors, but this would be specifying a magnitude and a direction. And in fact, when you do one-dimensional vectors, the convention typically is, if you're dealing that one dimension is in the vertical direction, it's not a, it's not a ridiculous convention when you say, well, we'll use the sign of our, we'll use the sign as an indicator of direction. So positive could be up and negative could be down. And even when you do in pre-calculus classes, you study parametric equations, you'll often study a particle that's traveling in one dimension, and you use the convention that positive is to the right and negative is to the left. And when you set up this convention, and that's what was done in this video right over here, you are setting these up as vector quantities. They're not done in the traditional way when you're doing in a two-dimensional vector and you're saying i, j, and k. But when you set up the convention, and that was explicitly done in this video right over here, your sign is specifying is specifying the direction, and so allowing this to be a vector expression. So this is a, a, a very wrong statement, it, that in a one-dimensional kinematics problem, you don't need to include the vector idea, because later on we build on this video where the, the ball actually does switch directions. And if you don't, have, if you don't in, in, involve the vector idea, there's no real easy way to express that switching of directions, even in the one-dimensional case. And then once you have that convention, if you set up that convention in your video or in your explanation that positive is up and negative is down, it's completely legitimate to say that the vector, the velocity vector, can be 0. In our one-dimensional case, that means it's stationary. It's neither going up nor down. So I just wanted to clarify that. And I think just the, 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 the critique of the critique hopefully can be useful for uh, the students who are trying to parse all of this. And, and I really do appreciate the feedback from, from uh, Rhett Allen, because I think it, it introduced a very uh, important uh, conversation here.